if you find this sleep story helpful or interesting, then give it a thumbs up. Leave any comments that you've got below. And if you aren't already, subscribe to the channel and click the bell icon so you can receive notifications of when future sleep stories go live. I have dozens and dozens of stories already on my channel that you can go and search. I also release new stories every single week. So I hope you enjoy this story. So just take a moment to allow your eyes to close. And with your eyes closed, I'm just going to tell this sleep meditation in the background. And as I tell this sleep meditation, I don't know whether you'll drift deeper to the sound of my voice or to the spaces between my words. And while you begin to drift deeper and relax asleep, you can have a sense of driving down a really long road and you're heading on a road trip and you've been driving for many hours and around you out of the windows you just see forest passing you by and it all looks very similar almost like a pine forest and you can see how dense that looks as you travel down this incredibly straight road and the sun sets and you can see stars in the sky and you can notice a certain stillness outside of the car with just that breeze coming in the window if you open the window but noticing that there's a certain stillness that the trees seem very still the night outside the car seems very still and you've been driving for quite some time and after even longer You notice that the trees begin to thin out a little. And as they do, you can see a large open plain, a large open space with the most beautiful view of the night sky. And as you pull over, just beyond the forest. You open the car door, you exit the car, and you look around, and you can't see a single light in any direction. And you're out in the middle of nowhere, miles from anywhere. And you lay back on the warm bonnet of your car on a blanket and you can feel that comfortable warmth of that bonnet gently warming the blanket and then the softness of that blanket under your back your legs as you gaze up at the sky And after just a short while of gazing at the sky, your eyes begin to adapt to the dark. And you notice an increase in those twinkling stars. You begin to notice subtle colours in the sky. And you just relax back on that car bonnet feeling the warmth radiating up from beneath you and you see the occasional shooting star you notice what looks like tiny dots traveling rapidly across the night sky as satellites pass overhead and while your eyes continue to 
to get used to the dark. You begin to see a comet in the sky. You see the most brilliant electric blue and a hazy electric blue tail. And you gaze at that comet. And although that comet seems to just be hovering in space, you're aware that it's actually traveling thousands of miles an hour. And while you gaze at that comet, you can feel your breathing beginning to relax. You can notice how you're breathing deeper and deeper in your stomach. How those arms are feeling heavier. Those legs are feeling heavier. Those eyelids are feeling heavier. And those eyes begin to comfortably close. And at first they just blink shut almost like an extended blink. But then after a while, when they blink shut, they remain shut as you begin to drift in your mind. And you can feel the warmth of that car beneath you and the comfort of the blanket and the silence around you just the subtle sounds of the wildlife in the forest and some subtle other sounds around you at night. As you drift deeper into your mind and while you drift deeper inside, you start to have this feeling like you're resting on the softest, warmest, most comfortable sand, lying back almost like on a cushion of sand. You have this feeling of that sand beneath your hands, moving your fingertips gently and feeling the loose sand between your fingertips. And as your fingertips move through that warm sand, Noticing that as they pass just beneath the surface of the sand, the sand is so much cooler than that sand on top. Feeling that movement and the softness of that sand through those fingertips. And then having a sense of scooping up some sand in one hand while still resting on your back with your eyes closed and lifting your hands slightly up off the ground and just letting that sand flow out of your hand, through your fingertips and back down to the ground and feeling the coolness of that on your palm. And you start to have this sense that you're lying down at night time in a desert and that the sand is holding some of the warmth. And as you begin to open your eyes, you can see the most beautiful blue hue surrounding you. like the night sky is making everything multiple shades of blue with the almost black sky down to the slightly lighter blue sand and you stand up and some of that sand falls off onto the ground from your clothes and you begin to walk through this desert and you can see the shapes of sand dunes stretching out towards the horizon. 
you can notice the silvery moon low on the horizon in one direction and the way that's elongating those shadows and adding a slight silvery tip to the tops of the dunes and almost like millions of loose diamonds blowing in the breeze A small little sand particles blow around in that breeze and get caught in the silver light of the moon. Almost like diamonds blowing off the top of dunes and rolling down those dunes. Like dresses that when someone turns in a sparkly dress it just twinkles and catches the light. And you have this instinctive feeling of the direction you should head. And so you walk through this desert, feeling each footstep. As your feet step forward one at a time, sinking into the sand, pushing through the sand. with the muted, sliding sound of each footstep. And you begin to ascend one of the sand dunes. And as you reach the top, you notice off in the distance a flickering orange glow. And so you begin to head towards that flickering orange glow. And as you get nearer to that glow, so you notice that there's someone sitting almost in a meditative position by a campfire. And you can see that dancing, glowing light of the fire. Illuminating the golden sand near the fire and stretching out dancing shadows and you can smell that smell of the campfire and hear the crackling and the popping of the campfire and as you near that person you begin to see what they look like and you notice that they notice you and they look over at you with the friendliest of faces and they don't say a word they just look at a location and then give a gesture as if to say to sit and join them and you sit down and you sit in a similar position to them And they put themselves back into the position they were in. And they close their eyes again. And so you close your eyes. And then you hear them say that you're here to go on a deep and spiritual journey. And that they're here to be a guide to help you on that journey. And you have this sense of connection with them, almost like somehow you're breathing the same. You're beginning to synchronize without saying a word. And you feel this deepening of your breathing. You feel the sense of your muscles relaxing, of your shoulders lowering down of the muscles around your face softening and almost a feeling of losing feeling of your body 
and just being a mind floating in space by this fire. Starting to hear that crackling sound of the fire, starting to notice through your eyelids the flickering of the flame and feeling a cool breeze occasionally on your cheeks, mixed with the warm breeze as the wind changes direction and blows past the fire and becoming almost hyper attuned to picking up on the sensations of the experience of sitting by that fire motionless just focusing on being in the moment still aware that you feel almost like there's a connection between you and this guide and then you have this sense that the guide has just taken a deep breath in and a long breath out. And that as you have that sense, so you notice that your body has done the same. That your body has taken a deep breath in and a long breath out. As you relax deeper into the experience. And then you hear the guide telling you to go to the beach. And you just hear those words almost in your mind's eye, go to the beach. And you don't know what they mean, go to the beach. You don't know what beach, but you start to have this sense of hearing the ocean just softly bubbling and rolling in along a sandy beach. That kind of ocean that each wave rolls very shallow and in a long way before slowing down and then drawing back out again. And you have the sense of those waves rolling in and out. Almost like each breath that you're taking, rolling in and out again. And you notice that on this beach, as it begins to form in your mind's eye, that it's still night time. There's still a low moon. But now that moon is creating silver dancing light across the ocean. Those stars are twinkling overhead. The sand is still soft. There's still a campfire here. And this guide is still sat with you. But this sand is now the sand of a beach. And you're up on the beach, on the soft sand. Noticing that closer to the water's edge, the sand firms up. And the guide stands up and tells you to stand up. And tells you to walk with them. And to walk mindfully to be aware of each step that you take, to be in the moment taking those steps, not having your mind focusing on other things and other thoughts, but paying all of your attention to the process and the experience of walking toward the seashore. And together you walk down towards that sea, feeling your bare feet walking through warm, soft sand, sinking into that sand with each step, the sound of each step, the feeling, that tickling of the dry sand on the toes around your feet, 
the movement of that sand through your toes as you raise your foot. Move your foot and your leg forward and place your foot back down again in the sand. And then the gradual firming up of that sand as you get closer to the shore. And then being able to sense through the soles of your feet the slight dampness to that sand. And as you continue walking, noticing the wetness of the sand and how with each step you create a slight puddle as your foot pushes into the sand and squeezes some of that water away from underneath your foot. And then the guide tells you to stop and they crouch down, and they tell you to crouch down. And they reveal in their hand that they're holding a crystal ball. And they tell you to watch that crystal ball. And as a wave is rolling in on the shore, bubbling its way along, that shallow sandy area. They wait until that wave is almost next to you. And then they roll that crystal ball towards the water. And you notice while watching the crystal ball as you are told to do, the way the moon glistens and manages to catch some of the imperfections in that crystal ball, some of the air bubbles in that crystal ball, almost making small little flashes of silver light. The way the white water at the front edge of that rolling in wave meets the crystal ball, wraps its way around the crystal ball, pulls itself up the middle and over the top of the crystal ball as that ball rolls through the water, passing through the waves. And your eyes follow that crystal, seeing a path of white water left behind the crystal. And as you watch that, so you hear the guide say now and as they say now something strange happens that crystal ball begins to look like a comet in space like a spinning ball of dirty ice almost like a grey whitey colour surrounded by a blue gas that looks a bit like the white water bubbling behind that crystal ball. And you suddenly notice that the ocean seems to have gone quiet and disappeared that you suddenly can't feel the ground beneath you and that you seem to just be a mind in space watching this comet almost fizzing and popping and passing through the solar system and as a mind you seem to be almost keeping up with this comet keeping a fixed distance from it. And you have this sense that the mind of the guide is here with you as you follow this comet. And as you look around you, you notice the different planets. You can see the blue marble of Earth, the grey moon, You can see the sun 
shining brightly. And even though you know there's no sound here in space, you have this sense of the crackling and popping and sounds from this comet. And that comet passes the planets and begins to leave the solar system. And you have this sense the guide remains with you on this journey. And as the comet takes one course, so your minds together take a different course. And you have this almost psychic sense of this guide telling you that as just part of the universe, almost like part of a universal consciousness which flows with the universe outside of space and time, with the fabric of the universe, you're going to be traveling beyond the solar system. And they almost psychically help you to set a course towards a tiny pinprick of light in the distance. You have this sense of traveling towards that light and accelerating faster and faster and stars around you passing by faster and faster until they almost become streaks of light with just that point of light in front of you gradually getting larger and larger in your field of view until you almost grind to a halt in an instant and psychically hear the voice of the guide telling you that we're heading to one of the planets here. And you spot the planet you're heading towards and approach that planet. And find yourself entering the planet's atmosphere. And you realize this planet resembles Earth. You can imagine this being somewhere on Earth. And you head down to a beach. And as you reach this shore of an alien world, you land with a physical body and the guide tells you the physical body is an illusion. It's just here to help you feel more comfortable with the experience. To help you to be able to move around in a way that makes more sense to you. And they stand up. And they begin to walk away from the seashore. And they head up over a bank and down the other side of the bank and they begin to walk towards what looks like a green lagoon and they can notice certain animals drinking an animal that looks like an elephant An animal that looks like a giraffe. And you can see plants of different sizes. And you realize that different animals will have adapted to take advantage of the different plants around here. And to all carve out their specific niche, just like anywhere else. And so you end up not surprised at a familiarity 
of animals. And off in the distance, you can see flashes on the horizon, like there's a storm somewhere just over the horizon. And it's so distant, you can't hear any thunder. You can just notice those flashes in the sky from time to time. And something about it feels comforting. But you can smell the smell of that storm off in the distance. You can see what looks like grass surrounding this area, almost like wide bladed grass. And you reach down with your fingertips and you run your fingers through this grass to see what it feels like. And notice that it feels very much like a mix between grass and feathers, that it's got a certain consistency of grass, but a softness like feathers, that almost tickles your palm as you run your hands through that. And you can feel the slight dampness, like the storm perhaps was here a little while ago. And as you continue to walk through that, so you walk over towards those animals. And this guide tells you to observe, to open your mind to these animals. And so you get closer to those animals. You have this sense of almost connecting with the animals, as if you're falling into a synchronization with them. Where what you do, they begin to do, and what they do, you copy. Almost like you start to understand them on a deep and meaningful level. And you begin to notice a connection between yourself and everything around you. And realize that you are the universe. That you're not like a fish in water where the fish isn't the water. The fish is in the water. It's a bit like you're in water and you are water. You're just like a conscious bit of water. And that there's no separating you from the universe. And you begin to have this insight and begin to explore the meaning of realizing that there's a universal consciousness that connects all things. That if you can just get on the right frequency, you can channel that. And this guide continues to help you to keep focused, keep learning, keep studying these animals. And they take you from this place. And you walk away, you head over another hill. And you find what looks like some ruins almost like some ancient civilization once lived here. And you realize these ruins seem to have been built out of some kind of shiny black stone. And that black stone has worn down through time, but you can still notice 
something about that stone, the way it was worked. You can touch it and notice that it feels like touching highly polished stone. And then you see what looks like the tip of a black pyramid sticking out of the ground. And the guide explains that the civilization was here so long ago that these buildings are just the tip of the iceberg and that the way in is to go down deeper. And they tell you that because you are the universe, there is no you and the ground. You're just a concept. And that most of what's around you is nothing. Most of what makes up you is nothing. And that it's only the forces that make your nothing not pass through that nothing. And as they explain this, they begin to have you breathe in a deep and comfortable way. And while you breathe deeply and comfortably, with each out-breath being longer than each in-breath, you almost have this slight light-headed feeling as you drift deeper and deeper into the experience and have this feeling of passing through the ground and then finding yourself stood inside the pyramid and your eyes are closed and you know you're in the pyramid because of the way your breathing seems to now be echoing and bouncing off the walls of the pyramid. And you open your eyes. And the guide holds their hand out. And above their hand, a pure white light appears almost like an orb of flame. And that illuminates the inside of this pyramid. And you notice how smooth the inside of this pyramid is. And you touch that smooth black stone with your fingertips. And you notice what look like hieroglyphics that you recognize as being very similar to Egyptian hieroglyphics. And as you run your fingers over them, so you can feel the way they were carved into the stone. And you have this sense of the fact you're touching something that was carved thousands of years in the past. And you don't understand it but you explore it with your fingertips. You try to make sense of it. And the guide seems to know what they're doing, where they're going. And they march off through the pyramid, footsteps echoing, almost sounding like the footsteps are coming from behind you as they walk forward and you follow them, now with your footsteps echoing and sounding like they're coming from behind you. And then almost like a few seconds later, those footsteps seem to sound like they're coming from above you as the sound of them reaches the top of the pyramid and then echoes and bounces back down towards you. 
and you find this an unusual experience and a curious experience. And you arrive at a wall that seems to have nothing on it, just incredibly smooth, no hieroglyphics, no markings at all. And the guide pulls out a metal stick that shines and looks solid gold. And they tap with that metallic tap on that black wall. And then you hear the sound of rock moving and sliding. And that wall slides open. And you walk into this room that seems to be sparkling as if there's millions of diamonds surrounding the walls and now catching the light from the guide's hand. And beams of light reflect and dance off all of the walls and send sparkling light across the floor as that guide walks in and in the middle of this room is a plinth and on that plinth is a little black box and the guide tells you to open that box so you walk over to the box you carefully lift the lid of that box and inside that box you see a gold ring with what looks like diamonds surrounding that ring and the diamonds are just small but there's many of them, making it so that with the slightest bit of light, that gold ring sparkles and shines. And they tell you to take that ring, hold that ring in your hand, wrap your fingers around that ring, close your eyes, And think of peace, think of comfort, and as you put that ring in your hand, close your hand round that ring, close your eyes and think of peace and comfort, so your mind begins to drift off somewhere else. You suddenly have this feeling of galloping along on a white horse, a white horse that's such a brilliant white it almost glows, almost as if it's emitting light. And this white horse is galloping through the most brilliant green meadows with a backdrop of the most beautiful blue sky, the sound of each step of that horse, the wind in your face, that feeling of powering along through this meadow, and then arriving by a lake, and you dismount by this lake and you walk to that lake you put your hand in the water feel the temperature of the lake the feeling of that water around your fingertips and you see a little island in the middle of the lake 
with a few trees on that island and a rowboat and you get into the rowboat you push off from the shore and start heading toward that island and as you row towards that island you can smell the water that fresh lake smell feel the breeze of the air you can see that white horse eating some of that grass on the edge of the lake and you arrive at that island and as you get closer to the island so you smell the sweetest peach smell you arrive at the island push the boat a little way up the shore climb out of that boat walk among the trees noticing that incredibly sweet peach smell from this island and you see what looks like a treasure chest in the middle of the island you open that and inside you find a book and you're surprised to discover that you can read this book and that this book is a book of magic and it describes itself as a book of natural magic and as you read through, you notice that it's telling you ways to connect with nature, to be one with nature, to be able to access the healing power of nature and to be able to share that and channel the healing power of nature through you to others. And it talks about requiring a talisman, requiring an object, that you have on you that becomes associated with the magic associated with your ability to carry out that magic and while you read through this book so you begin to hear the distant sound of songbirds chirping you begin to feel a deep sense of serenity and comfort as you connect deeper with the world around you with the fundamental nature of nature and you're curious about this idea of a talisman and you read that the talisman is everlasting and then at the bottom of the book on the last page is just drawn a circle and lots of stars and you realize that the talisman is the ring that's the thing that's eternal that connects you with this world and you notice that the guide hasn't been around here and you take that book you row back from the island you mount that horse you ride back towards the way you came but you don't know where you're heading because you don't know how you ended up here but as you continue so you suddenly find yourself back in that pyramid but as you come to in the pyramid you realize you have the book in your hand and the ring in your other hand and the guide tells you they led you to where they needed to lead you you found what you needed to find you had to make the end of the journey yourself and you had to discover the end of this journey for yourself. 
and then they close that black box. They tell you to think about being back up on the surface. And so you think about being back up on the surface and you find yourself back up on the surface by the ruins. And you walk back towards the beach. And then you find your way back through space from this place, all the way back to Earth. You find your way to that desert. And then the guide tells you it's time to go. And you head out of that desert. Walking back to where you initially lied down. And as you sit down there, so you find yourself coming to on your car bonnet and looking up at the stars. And you're curious about the experience you just had, wondering whether it was just a dream. And as you sit up, so you notice that there's a book beside you. And you notice that there's some sand on the blanket. There's some sand on the book. And sitting right in the centre on that book is that ring. And you sit up. You pick up that ring. You try that ring on, see if it fits on your finger. You put it on one of your fingers. And then you start looking through the book. And as you look through the book, so you realise the whole experience must have happened to you. And while looking through the book, so you start to have this sense, almost like there's an energy coming out of you and connecting with the world around you. Almost like your senses heighten to those sounds of birds, to the sounds of other animals. Almost like a part of your awareness flows with the wind, twinkles with the stars. Almost like you have a bubble of awareness that spreads out from you, wider and wider. And while you have this sense of your awareness spreading wider and wider, You notice fireflies flying from the forest. You watch as they dance around in the sky. And then you see one heading down towards you. And as it gets close, you notice that it's a small fairy. that tells you that you've connected with this world and that with practice and meditation and giving time to allow yourself to be still, you can be still and almost slide yourself into all realities where you can then travel through realities. And they explain that there is no past, no present, no future. There's just now. Everywhere is just now. And when you master this to that extent that you realize everywhere is just now, 
given that physical reality is stuck in a specific time, but reality itself is timeless, you'll be able to travel in the past, the present, the future, and through realities. And you tell this fairy that you don't believe that. Until you saw them, you didn't even believe in fairies. And they told you that when there's universe as large as this, when there are multiple universes, everything that's possible is somewhere. And that even things you think are impossible are often very possible. And they tell you they can give you an example of this connection. And they hover in front of you, just above eye level. And they say, just watch me. Keep looking at my glow. And while you look at my glow, I'm just going to count back from ten. And with each count, you can begin to drift inside deeper. Almost like making time stand still. And that with each count, your head can relax, your shoulders, your arms, your body, your chest, and your legs. All the way down through your body. Your breathing can deepen and time can stand still. And when time stands still, you can be separate from the universe, separate from this moment, to access the universal now. And you can travel through time And you can learn to do this for yourself, but for now, I'll guide you. Ten, nine, eight, deeper and deeper, seven, six, five, four, three, two, one, and you can notice the way the fairy's wings slow down to a halt. Notice the way the breeze stops, sound stops, the twinkling of the stars stops, time stops. And as time stops, you're aware that despite physically you being incredibly still, as time for you physically has stopped, you're thinking mentally. And you find that you start thinking about a specific time. And while you think about a specific time, so a gentle mist seems to begin forming around you. And as that mist forms, so the reality around you fades, turns white and disappears. And then you find yourself sitting on a blanket as a child with a teddy bear in front of you. You reach over, you pick up that teddy bear. And you realize you've traveled way back in the past. 
and you can feel that teddy bear, the weight of the teddy bear, the softness, you can squidge it slightly with your fingers and thumb. You can feel its arms hanging over the tops of your hands, that slight tickling of the fur of the teddy bear. The slight weight change as its head nods backwards and forwards as you move it. That smell of the teddy bear that seems to bring such comfort to your mind. And you put that teddy bear down and you stand up and you walk around. And a puppy runs over to you wagging its tail and it jumps up and seems excited to meet you and you stroke that puppy's fur you pet that puppy you pick up a tennis ball you throw that the puppy chases after it brings it back you have this feeling of these being memories of pleasant times in the past You have a memory of sitting down, lost in thought, as a cat climbs up on your lap and it turns itself around and slumps down in your lap and you instinctively begin to stroke that cat and you can feel that gentle vibration of the cat as it purrs, you can hear that purring of the cat and feel that purring that something about the frequency of that purring seems to be transmitting some kind of healing to you helping you feel better helping you somehow ease discomfort And you almost get lost in thought with the petting of that cat. And then you find yourself having this sense of walking along a beach, walking along a shore on a beautiful sunny day. That water rolling in across your feet and then rolling back out again. Then you have a sense of walking through the woods, climbing over logs and fallen down tree trunks. Feeling the face smiling. You have this sense that you seem to be passing through memories through pleasant times but you don't feel that these are all your memories and then you find yourself drifting back you see the fairy's wings moving very slowly and then that slow movement accelerating And that fairy begins to explain to you about the experience you've just had. About what it means to be connected to a universal consciousness that's timeless and spaceless. To help give you motivation to achieve what it is you want to achieve give you motivation to continue practicing and learning to connect with the world in a meaningful way and to appreciate the world in a meaningful way through that connection 
and they explain that the ring will guide you. That any time you're lost and want to find yourself, you can just touch that ring and it'll remind you of your experiences, of your learnings. And just touching the ring on your finger can bring a deep sense of peace, of calm and comfort. Can bring a clear mind, clear thinking. And seem to slow time down and give you time to think and find the path forward. And the book will guide and educate your learning. And then that fairy disappears back off among the fireflies as they disappear off back into the forest. You set up a camp in the meadow. You relax back in a tent. You know you've got more exploring to do, more learning to do. And feeling a deep sense of peace. You snuggle up on a blanket in a sleeping bag with the smell of the inside of that tent relaxing you. That sound of the breeze on the walls of the tent, helping you drift and float comfortably and relax to sleep. And you drift and float so peacefully, so comfortably asleep, knowing you'll awaken, feeling so motivated in the morning to crack on with your day almost instinctively motivated and driven in the morning as you drift and float peacefully asleep.